Right, welcome back to the Average Golfers channel and another episode of Testing the Tips where I, as an average golfer, test out some of the tips from the leading golf YouTubers out there. And there's a tutorial today coming from Danny Maud where I think it's almost guaranteed to improve your golf swing. And I say almost. Right, so you might struggle with a slice or you might struggle with a cast at the top of that downswing which is something I personally struggle with and I think these two drills we're going to look at will certainly help you um, improve your swing and don't forget it's worth me pointing out this stage this is my interpretation of Danny's lesson Danny's tips and if you want a better explanation than I can give then make sure you hit that link in the description below to a link to Danny's full video but for now we're going to start off with Drill number one in how to eradicate or certainly help those couple of swing issues I just mentioned. Right, so the two issues that I just mentioned are the slice and like I said, that bit of casting. I think a slice is supposedly a major, major problem in the majority of average golfers game. It's the most common shot shape. So this should be interesting and see if it helps. But essentially what Danny explains is this. It's our hand position when we get into our, the top of our, um, of our backswing. And what a slicer will do, we'll get high up on this side and then hit very much across the ball. Yeah, I think that's fairly straightforward and, and we can all sort of recognise that. So high hands up here and then driving almost across the ball, which we know produces that shot shape. The second thing that's not really in Danny's video, but it's something I could relate to and pick up from. And that's what I've tried to do with all this series that we've done is look at videos, watch them and see, first of all, do they work for me and then how and They've, they've changed or helped the issues that I've got. One of the issues I have is when I take my, uh, I'm very sort of flat in the backswing, but then I also have a tendency of sort of casting out my forearm or my, um, my, my front bicep, left bicep, leaves my chest a little, and I can do exactly that same thing, cast a little bit out at the top of the, uh, top of the, um, the backswing, and then hit that same drive down, which effectively either smothers that shot over to the left or can produce a slice. So the drill that we look at is how we can stop that and get a little bit more on plane when we're coming through in terms of our downswing. And the first thing that Danny uses is a, uh, is a, is a basket that you can find any driving range. You take your basket and all you're simply doing is looking to turn to a position where you place the basket right behind you um, as if you're about to place it on the floor. So front on you turn and what that produces is a couple of things it forces you to, to to move the hips turn the hips it's impossible to do just with arms so it gets this hip turning a little bit you get much more rotation and the second thing it does is get that arm extended out and then what Danny then looks to do is just to take that into a motion that goes a little bit higher so instead of being up here which is that position that I said for the sort of slicer we'll go very much all arms up to the top you get your basket you turn into that position and then you just look to extend that a little bit and again depending on your kind of flexibility how much you can actually do that but what it starts to do almost straight away is like i said it gets those hips turning it stops the hands going into that position where a slicer would be and it gets the body the upper body involved the lower body involved and the arms are in there as well and you've got that turn and it's already starting to create like i said just with a basket of balls a different position than we would ordinarily be in. The second bit that we look at stops then, for me at least anyway, that casting position, so where I would then still take the basket and move out, it stops me from doing that, and that's the next drill that we'll look at, but for that, we need to go back inside the driving range. Right, so back inside for this next bit of a drill, and we need to take another, another object, uh, accessory from the driving range, and this time it's what you, uh, a ball holder, I suppose you'd call it. And it creates the perfect arc in terms of this swing drill that we're going to try and uh, try and create. Uh, and again, what Danny says, if these aren't available, then you're going to have to get some kind of foot spray and create that same kind of arc. But in principle, what we're going to do is use that as our guide for, uh, for where we're going to try and get the club head to sort of follow uh, that, that kind of path, that shape. So as I said before, club in hand now you've got your back swing so that's that basket of balls moving the basket of balls to where we were so we're all right there we're turning that top off now for me what i don't want to do now i don't want to cast 
and for other people who've come hopefully still not in this position you don't want to come across and follow that path really that side of the arc is again is going to produce the uh, the fade so what we'll be looking to do is get turned and then drive that ball inside along or drive that club head rather inside along that shape of the arc now what you're going to see at the minute a couple of shots i hit when i first started this drill and i've got to admit straight away i noticed it was keeping me tight if you like in terms of that top of the backswing so i was hoping that i wasn't casting didn't have the camera at the back of me so i'm not sure but you can see what happened they went straight if you like with a little bit of a leap to the right there was certainly no draw shape there and that's where I had the sort of first few problems. So then for me, it was really realizing that even though I got this visual aid, I was still not coming inside enough, if you like, and creating that shape. So what I did was, like I said, so let, let me try, first of all, whilst the camera's on, we've seen a couple camera off. Let me see if I can execute this drill in the way I did now. So what I was doing, making sure I had that turn, which I probably didn't do quite enough, still a bit too much with the arms, create that turn, and then drive across on that inside. And that's a real visual, I've just hit a right to left shot. It's that visual aid and it's that concentration for me of where coming to this side, don't let my arms leave me whatsoever and I just drive on that inside line and then I try and keep that whole shape is very much a kind of rounded draw shape. As I said in the intro in terms of guarantees, no there aren't guarantees with any of these tuitions and tips, but what they do is give you some kind of visual aids to try and help you sort of unravel some of the mistakes you might be making and see if they resonate in the brain. And some of them might work for you. Others, it's another tip that works for you. It's kind of, I found by trying these things out, like I said, some work for me, others don't. And while, like I said, I've got to work hard with this one. I've certainly got to try my very best. And if you watch these two shots now that we recorded earlier in the other room, as you'll see, a couple of shots that we execute that all of a sudden change that little bit of leakage out to the right to that sort of nice draw shape. I say nice draw shape, I don't want to be hooking the ball, that's just nice controlled draw shape. And all that was to do with, for me, was concentrating on the turn a little bit more. So all I was concentrating first of all when I tried the drill, I was very much sort of in a um, bit rigid position and just concentrating on driving on the inside. That didn't work as much as getting the first piece of the drill right, which was the basket of balls, turning, then making sure. So it's the two parts of the drill that you need to execute to try and get this working for you. I hope that made sense. I think Danny Maud's videos for me are absolutely spot on. I've tried a few of them now. They really do work. He goes into a little bit more explanation that I hope that I can translate and relay back to you. Good enough, but like I said, go and watch Danny's video. But I can honestly say that this is an aid or train or, or that's uh, say a bit of foot spray arc, whatever you want to call it, is a brilliant visual. Now, obviously, that's got to come away at some point. We've got to go out on the golf course, but for now, it's just a case of keeping on turning. Even the basket of ball things, it helps you feel this top half, this muscle sort of stretching a bit. You can feel and you can see that your hips have turned a little bit because it's impossible to get into that position without doing so. And then that second part of the drill is, like I said, making sure that you feel that you're coming inside of this arc and then again following through. And I reckon, I'll guarantee that most of you will start to see a reduction at least in that fade and perhaps even that ball moving from right to left. Anyway, good luck. I hope it does work for you. And uh, I've said all along with these tips, big thing is interpretation. But it's been proved to be really, really popular. So for me, if you try the drill, Come back, put your feedback in the comments down below because I think what's happening is other golfers are then reading those comments. If they see some positivity, it encourages them to go out there and give it a go themselves. And uh, the idea is, like I said, try and find some good tips that can help us play golf just that little bit better. Right, thanks as ever for watching. Hit that like button and uh, I'll see you all next week for another Testing the Tips.